All right, so I'd like to start by building on a previous discussion that we had in a past podcast episode. We were talking about the topic of surrogacy because Khloe Kardashian did something that was quite brave. Um, she was honest about how difficult it was for her to adjust. She went to the hospital, obviously. She had a surrogate for her second child. And her reasons for having a surrogate was not because of infertility, which brings in a huge moral question that we are attempting to tackle with the most, the utmost sensitivity, obviously, because we all know those stories of women that try to get pregnant for 10, 11, 12 years, for whatever reason, they cannot become pregnant. I, I know people that have had a child through surrogacy, um, and it, it's, it's a miracle, right? They just go, somebody gave us the greatest gift. A lot of times they will turn to a family member. A lot of times they keep that surrogate in their life. But that is not the examples that we are seeing that are becoming more commonplace today. We are seeing women that just don't want to get fat, that just don't want to carry the child, that want a particular sex, which is allowed in America. You're allowed to choose which sex you want. So people are coming from overseas and deciding to use the surrogate program in America because they say, well, I have a daughter and I maybe want a son. They have It's becoming a symbol of wealth and privilege that you can just sort of rent somebody's body. And of course, in many circumstances, it's because it's a gay couple. They don't want to have sex with a woman or they don't want to have sex with a man. And so they're turning to surrogacy uh, because this is just an easier route for them and they can afford it, right? It's becoming a token of wealth and privilege. And I think that there is something, as I have said in previous episodes, that is deeply wrong and immoral about this. And the more I learn about the surrogacy industry and how corrupt it is and how women's bodies are being used and how many miscarriages they go through and how it works, I am drawn closer to that position. Um, now, we talked about Khloe Kardashian talking about how difficult it was for her to establish a connection with her son who she had via surrogacy, how weird she felt going to the hospital, having not been pregnant to just pick up a child after another woman has just gone through pregnancy and labor and delivery. So just to jog your memory regarding what she said, take a listen. Don't stop. Don't stop. I felt really guilty that like this woman just had a, my baby and you're just... I take the baby and then I go to another room and you're sort of separated. Like I felt it's such a transactional experience because it's not about him. I wish someone was honest about surrogacy. Again, I would like to commend her on this because this is incredibly brave. It's not easy to talk about this topic. She later went on to talk about how she's been having difficulty establishing a connection with her son. She may have one today. Obviously, we're, we're looking at when this first couple of months following the birth and being open about this has cracked open the conversation. Congress once again allowed itself to be pushed into appeasing the administration and raising the debt ceiling for the 79th time paying the way for continued reckless spending and further devaluation of the dollar. As our national debt continues to skyrocket, how are you protecting your savings? Times like these are a great reminder to diversify a portion of your savings into gold, and you can do that with the help of Birch Gold. Birch Gold will help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA that's backed in gold. You don't pay a penny out of pocket. When currencies fail, gold is a safe haven. How much more times a dollar even have? Protect your savings with gold. Birch Gold has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and thousands of happy customers. So text Candace to 989898 and get your free info kit on gold. Again, text Candace to 989898. Well, now turning our attention to Lance Bass. He's formerly in NSYNC. He is outwardly gay. And he and his husband have gone through two rounds of IVF, and they worked with over 10 egg donors before their twins were born. He says that the children didn't show him any affection in the first year of their life. This is a quote from him. He says, the first year, they wouldn't give me any love. They never hugged. They never wanted to snuggle. And I was so upset about it because they would do that with my mom. My mom would come over and boom, they'd snuggle with her. He candidly also shared that he and his husband struggled in their conception journey over three years. The couple experienced two full rounds of IVF with the surrogate, one of which resulted in a pregnancy loss at six weeks. They also worked with 10 different egg donors, as I said before, before they finally achieved success. And at one point, he admitted that he doubted whether he was supposed to be a parent or not because it was so hard. He said, quote, us trying to get pregnant was a difficult time. It took us three years to finally get this, kids, but you keep going forward and the universe gives you what you need when you need it. So 
looking into this particular scenario, and I do want to say that he says that he has decided to keep that surrogate in their life in some capacity. When you ever, when you look into these stories, these celebrity stories, I think Priyanka Chopra, it was widely reported that her and Nick just didn't want, they couldn't come together. They couldn't find time to come together um, uh, and give birth. So they just got a surrogate. And that surrogate also had a difficult pregnancy. I believe their baby, uh, she delivered at 26 weeks very early. And you hear about these situations. You always hear them talking about how difficult it is for them. It's a very selfish discussion, how difficult it is for us, right? They're never talking about the surrogate that's gone through multiple miscarriages. They're never talking about what it must feel like for that individual to give birth and to have that baby in most circumstances taken immediately away from them and given to somebody else that's waiting in a different room. It's all about how they felt. Oh, it's very difficult for me to establish an accomplishment. I paid for this baby. It is transactional. I then came to pick up my what I paid for and look, this baby doesn't want to connect with me. Lance is even talking about something even more crucial because I cannot state enough how important it is for infant children to have the influences of women around them. I, I've talked about this on my show, my own experience as a mother. Women just know what to do. It, nothing tethers you to the reality of our biological differences quite like having a child. I always talk about how my husband, it just the, the instincts are just utterly different. I just, I look at a child and I know what to do as a woman when they're really small. And my husband just prefers when they get a little bit older. He would be so overwhelmed dealing with a certain circumstance. And he'd say, I don't know what's wrong with him. He's been crying. You know, I've gone out for maybe 45 minutes to the grocery store and I come back and they look like they've both been crying, to be honest. And I take a look at my husband and he's like, I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know what's wrong. He won't stop crying. And I, I say, honey, have you tried feeding him? You know, and he's like, oh yeah, I didn't try that, you know? And I'm saying this obvious, this actually did take place, but to really illustrate a point that those biological differences matter. And now that we are fostering this industry in which gay individuals are able to just say, well, you know what? I'm a gay man. I only like to have sex with men, and but I've got a lot of money and a lot of cash, and I'm just going to pay for somebody else's womb to give me the child that they want. Um, is this what we thought the surrogacy industry was going to be? I know there are a lot of people that really were upset when I talked about this last time. I said that I thought that it was utterly demonic to just rip a child um, from a woman's womb and to just give it to somebody else and, and separate them entirely, which is how a lot of these circumstances are playing out. Yes, there are these rare circumstances where they keep the surrogate around them. And as I said, uh, carving out an exception here for people whose sister carried the child for them, and you hear that, but that is not commonplace anymore. This is becoming a very Hollywood elitist business, and we have to have the courage to have these discussions and to have these real debates and to hear from the women who are surrogates. They are out there. They are telling their stories about how used they felt. You know, they needed the money. Is that a good reason um, to want to carry a child? It's not because they're wanting to just give a gift to a random person because you don't accept money if you're giving somebody a gift, right? If my, if my sister, sister couldn't get pregnant and I decided to carry her child, I wouldn't accept a paycheck from her to do that because it would truly be a gift, right? This doesn't seem to be that. And the writing is really on the wall for where this is headed.